Hello, my name's Katie Rushworth and today I'm going to show you how to plant up a raised bed. Now this one here has been made by Craig Phillips and it's really straightforward to do. You can see how to do it on the silverlinetools.com website. First of all, I'm going to fill it up with compost. Now I'm using a multi-purpose compost here. You can use homemade compost if you're disciplined enough to make it. A mixture of topsoil and compost would be fine. But it wants to be full up to the top. And there we go, that's about there now, ready for plants. Now it's amazing what you can grow in such a small space. We can have crops going all summer to be harvested in this. It's just a little bit of planning. First up, I've got some strawberry plants, which are really pretty. They have a delicate white flower, and then of course, the delicious fruits. So I'm gonna put them at the edge because they're gonna hang over and really soften the edge of this raised bed. Now the beauty of a raised bed is that it's full of fresh soil and compost, making it much easier to dig. Strawberries grow via these stolons. They send out these long runners and when they hit the soil, a new plant will grow. And then once it's got its roots and leaves established, you can snip that from the parent plant and you'll have a brand new strawberry plant in your border. Now, if you don't want too many stolons and strawberry plants, marching through your raised bed, you would simply cut them off and then the energy directed would go straight to the fruit instead of creating new plants. So next, I have a selection of herbs and some of the vegetables. So here I have onions, carrots, lettuce and beetroot. And I'm gonna put the carrots in first. Now carrots wouldn't usually grow in a bed as shallow as this, but this variety grow as a sphere, they're kind of a globe carrot, so they're perfect for small raised beds like this. They all stay nice and compact. So I'm going to put a row of them along here. Now carrots can be prone to attracting something called carrot root fly, which will demolish rows of carrots. The slightest bit of movement will send the fragrance of the carrot leaves like an alarm bell to the carrot root flies and they'll hunt them out and come and eat them all. However, we're going to do something called companion planting and the next row along is going to be herbs. And fingers crossed, the scent of the herbs will confuse the carrot fly and they will leave the carrots alone. Now carrots like really free draining soil. So if you're sowing directly into the ground with seeds, you should put some sand in the bottom of your hole and that will just help the seedlings root away. But as soon as we have plants like this, they should be fine. So to disguise the smell of the carrots, I'm putting in thyme, which is a pretty plant and it smells amazing. Then I have a rosemary and this is an evergreen shrub. It can get quite big, but if you use it a lot, it will keep its size nice and manageable. I also have some basil. I 
on some sage. And then the last herb I have to put in is chives. Now chives have a gorgeous flower on them. It's a bit like a purple pom-pom and you can eat the flower as well. They look amazing sprinkled on top of salads. Now next up I have some beetroot and beetroot are really easy to grow. You can grow them in the smallest of spaces. They're really reliable so whether you grow them from seed or by a plug plant like this, really easy and reliably cropping. Now should you want bigger beetroot, you can thin out the seedlings. So for example, I could pull this one away and sacrifice that one, meaning that I would get a bigger beetroot on the bottom of that one. But if you're not too fussed and are happy with smaller plants, then it's fine. Keep them as they are. Next, I'm gonna put my lettuces in. Now lettuce are quite thirsty plants. There's a lot of water content in the leaves so you have to make sure that you keep them well watered. And also, slugs love them. I find that eggshells sprinkled around the bases of them keep the slugs away. And also, if you can bring yourself to do it, beer traps. So if you sink a jam jar with some beer into it, into the soil, the slug will be lured into quite a kind death, I suppose. Drunk on beer, I can find, think of worse ways to go. I'm gonna give these a bit more space because this will grow into a big lettuce. If you're growing lettuce from seed, then you want to be sowing that seed once every two to three weeks and that will give you a succession of lettuce throughout the year. Whereas if you sow it all in one go, it all has to be used in one go. And there's only so many lettuce one family can eat. So try and space out your sowing periods. And then last but not least, I've got some onion plants. And in each pack like this, there are four and if you're really delicate, you can just pull them, tease them apart, like that. And then you have just the one onion. And sink them in. They smell incredibly pungent already. And again, planting onions alongside carrots will just deter those carrot fly. When your onions are ready to harvest, you need to lift them out of the ground. So when the onion sized, if you like, if that's a good guide, just lift them out of the ground and then leave the onions just on top of the soil, just to dry out for a few days. And that way they can be stored for much longer. They will keep for a good few months if you allow the skins to dry out. And there we are. In such a small space, I've got strawberries, carrots, a selection of herbs, beetroot, lettuce, and onion. And it's taken me about 20 minutes to plant up with very little maintenance and much easier on my back than bending down to the ground. I have to give everything a drink and just let it do its thing until things are ready to pick and harvest. Loads more gardening tips, go to silverlinetools.com.